Um, this next talk is going to be about quality assurance in Debian. It's going to be held by Lukas Nussbaum. Uh, he told me he's been a Debian developer for like three or four years. And I hope you enjoy this, Bob. Have fun. Thank you. <laughs> so my laptop doesn't work with, B with, B with Beamer. Apparently, there's a bug with KMS. So if someone wants to help me fix it, I uh, will be interested. So using Zach's laptop, I will talk about uh, first a short introduction about uh, Debian quality assurance. I have some numbers in the state, current state of the Debian archive, which are interesting. And then I will outline some ideas of uh, discussion topics, so we, because this is supposed to be above, so the point is to discuss things. So first, quality assur assurance. So the goal, the goal of the QA team is to improve the quality of Debian as a whole as opposed to uh, working on a small set of packages inside a more specific set of packages. It's not, the QA team is not really a team. It's more like a central place uh, with inside which people do work on QA, but there's no strict notion of being a member of the QA team. Um, so we, uh, we, are, we hang out on ISC, on Debian QA, and on Debian, the Debian QA mailing list. So what does the QA team does? Uh, first, we maintain uh, the PTS. That's mainly uh, Zach's uh, work nowadays. So P everybody knows the PTS. That's uh, the thing that recently broke yesterday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> DDPO is a pair developer overview about one's packages. Uh, since last year, there's UDD as well which I will talk about uh, later, and also, and also many other tools. So we also develop and use tools to run uh, AFCA-wide checks and, mass and do mass bug filings about the problems that we find in the archive, like uh, rebuilds of all packages in Debian, uh, and uh, pupas at Debian.org, so we'll just talk uh, later. Uh, we also take care of orphaned and neglected packages, and we try to track inactive maintainers in the MIA team, so missing for mis missing in action. So for those who, well, since last year or the year before, there are new things in QA. First, we've got uh, some new contributors to the team. So first, uh, Barry DeFries, who isn't there today, was done a lot of uh, grant work in QA. Rafael Geisert, who is here uh, today, I'm not sure if he's in the room. Oh, can you stand up so everybody knows you? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Marco Rodriguez, who is not here, uh, is not a DD, uh, neither, uh, who also has done a lot of work on, for example, closing bugs. Uh, that were filed against packages that were removed from Debian, which allows to archive them. So we have less uh, bugs which are unarchived and makes everything runs faster. Uh, and finally, Sandro Tozzi, uh, who is uh, currently the only person really working on uh, MIA and who isn't uh, here uh, as well. Um, so we have new tools as well. So uh, who was in the PewPad talk just before this one? Okay, so if you missed it, uh, there's no uh, website called pupasdebian.org where, uh, well, a service where the all packages are checked on a regular basis by pupas. That's work by uh, Olga and Liv. Uh, so that's really good because for a long, for a long time before, uh, nobody was really using pupas and reporting bug about pupas. Um, there's Ultimate Debian Database. There's a talk about uh, UDD tomorrow uh, evening. So come tomorrow uh, for the details. Uh, basically, the, uh, the idea, I don't, I don't remember if I have a slide about it or not. Uh, no, I don't. So the idea is to uh, gather all the information in, the, in all, the, all the different places pla place where we can find information in Debian in a single uh, SQL database so we can run queries which combine all the data from those uh, different places. And, uh, well, I will show some examples later. Uh, there's also uh, the PTS who got redesigned uh, yesterday. So if the PTS doesn't work for you, use Control shift r and then ask Zach if it doesn't work. And finally, 
uh, there's BAPAS. So BAPAS stands for Bad Packages Search. So the idea of this is to use uh, the various sources of info about packages that we can find in Debian and a scoring system to get a list of packages that are interesting for some reason. For example, we can, using BAPAS, we can get the list of packages which are really buggy, or which has a lot of open bugs, um, which are neglected by their maintainer, or which, are, which look useless because their popcorn is really low, for example. Uh, or which are orphaned, and then uh, process them in a systematic way. Uh, so here is an example of a table, and I have given another, well, uh, so window five, yes. <laughs> What's the mapping of this keyboard? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a, <laughs> okay. Where is plus in the on QWERTY keyboard? <laughs> Shift? No, that's French. Okay, so, uh, and it's missing, okay. <laughs> well, so I will just click on one of them. So this is, for example, the list of orphan packages. There's orphan written on the left of uh, the beamer. <laughs> so it's, uh, I'm, uh, today I worked on rewriting BAPAS to use UDD instead of uh, uh, ad hoc scripts to import the data. So this is generated uh, in real time by a, by a huge SQL query. So on the left, there's a list of packages, which you, which you can't see, but I can. Uh, then there's uh, the status, various columns about the status of the package. For example, this is a list of orphan packages. So you see the type of uh, uh, orphan bug that the package a has. The number of days since it was orphaned. So the list is sorted uh, with the uh, oldest orphan packages package first. Uh, the number of days since the package didn't migrate to testing. Or, or yeah, that's a, well, that's a, about the same. Uh, the top score score for the package, number of bugs, uh, the number of days in the last upload of the package, number of NMUs, uh, <laughs> and then comments there <laughs> that you can see as well. So using this, we can easily get an, uh, an idea of um, of what's the appropriate action for a package. Um, there's another list about. Um, packages that are maintained only with NMUs. So it takes a few seconds because of the huge SQL query that is behind that. So for example, if you take the first package there, it has been maintained using uh, 13 uh, NMUs in a row. The last, so yeah, that's quite nice. Actually, there's a bug because it's, it's displaced, it displaced 10 there, but that's a bug in UDD, not in the... <laughs> um, so yes, and there are lots of packages which are, which are maintained only using NMUs, which is quite impressive. Sorry? Oh, do you know it's? Oh, do you know which one is that one? Okay, well. <laughs> So now some numbers about uh, the state of the archive. So first we have uh, 40, a bit more than 14,000 source packages in SEED currently, including uh, contrib and non-free. 4% um, of them are orphaned, which is quite a lot, more than nearly 600 orphaned packages. That's the list of the most popular ones. So all those numbers are generated using UDD. So that's the kind of things that you can do using UDD. So come tomorrow if you want more details. Um, there's also uh, more than 2,000 packages which are not maintained or co-maintained by a DD or a team. Uh, 
That means that all the maintainers or uploaders are not none of the uplo maintainer or uploaders are DDs. That's fifteen percent of our packages. So this can be either a good thing if you consider that uh, that means that you can we can attract new people, or a bad thing since that means that those packages well the state might be more questionable than the one of those maintained by DDs. So that's the list. So there are no really major packages, but quite a lot of well-known packages anyway, like TCSH. 6% of our packages are RC buggy, with a list with many major packages this time. So that's the, pump the number of uh, popcorn installations. And finally, we have more than 1,000 packages that are in Ubuntu but not packaged in Debian. So the list is can be gen can be seen live using UDD. Uh, lots lots of them are Ubuntu specific, even if I included some of them. Um, there are some minor things that we don't want in Debian, like small shell scripts that someone thought was a good idea to upload to, to Ubuntu, but also some things that we really should have in Debian and that we don't. So now possible uh, topics for discussion, since this is above. So first, orphan packages, which is a usual topic that uh, uh, we like to discuss during QA buffs. So orphan packages are a real problem. First, they are often of uh, bad quality compared to the other packages. Um, the problem with, of, with that is that sometimes users just look for some, a package that does something and install, install them by mistake while they should, it should be better if they installed another maintained packages, package. Um, before the release, usually we have lots of RC bugs in the orphan packages and people try to fix them when sometimes it's not a good idea since the package is totally unmaintained anyway. So last year during DebConf, during the, the QA buff, the proposal to remove, to not release um, orphan packages uh, was raised. Uh, so what was suggested was that would be operable by the release team when needed. For example, if an orphan package is a dependency of another package that we want to release with. Um, that, would, that could be a, an automated process which is a good point. Another good point is it will increase the visibility of orphan packages because often the problem is that people don't know that uh, the package that they are using is orphaned. But on the other hand, it doesn't really solve the many orphan packages in unstable problem because even if we don't have them in testing, we still have them in unstable. And the worst problem is, is that people might adopt packages without maintaining them. This, instead of, well, to prevent them from being removed, the people would just adopt them, and uh, that doesn't solve any quality, any problem regarding quality. So the other solutions would be to remove some orphan packages, to work actively on finding the ones that, that we should remove, remove them, and uh, try to, then, well, then we would get a shorter list, and then can work on finding maintainers for the other ones. So if you look at uh, uh, the current list of orphaned packages, there are more than 200 packages which are orphaned for more than one year, and with popcorn lower than 500. So those are probably, mo lots of them are good candidates for being removed from Debian instead of uh, just keeping them in uh, for without doing anything. Also, the, um, um, uh, most of them have uh, really easy to find alternatives, so it's really quite stupid to have uh, five orphaned image viewer or music players while there are good ones which are maintained. And the other well, final solution is to increase, to find ways to increase the awareness of uh, possible maintainers about orphan packages because the main problem is that people don't maintain them because they don't know that they need a maintainer. So if, you, uh, if we had ways to, so that uh, possible maintainers would know that some of the things they use um, are orphaned, well, pr probably they would adopt them. Uh, other things that we could discuss is the status of uh, MIA, so that's the team that uh, tries to detect inactive maintainers. Um, and also, of course, the, all the QA 
uh, checks or tests of mass bus mass bug filings that you would like to do for squeeze. And of course, the idea there is not to just throw ideas saying, oh, you should do that, because uh, we would need help as well on doing them. So, OK, thank you. So let's discuss. I've got a question. Who is deciding which package will be removed or which Debian developer who is missing in action for a long time will be forced to leave the project? Well, the QA team sort of has authority to do that because nobody complains strongly about uh, uh, them doing that. But there's no official delegation uh, from the DPA to the QA team to allow it to do that. I think it's, uh, that's been like that for years, and everybody accepts that, I think. Um, for, for the packages, uh, what I recognize, there are many packages that are orphaned uh, since a long time, not maintained. Uh, I ask myself, why aren't they removed already? Um, didn't, shouldn't we um, set the, the level that... Uh, that the maintainers should work on their packages a little bit higher, so just remove them uh, and, and not wait another one or two years. Well, the problem is that our priority is our users. One of our priority is our, our users, and sometimes there are users of uh, some packages which are completely obscure. But, uh, for example, yesterday I looked at a package called Rhyme, which, finds, uh, which uses a dictionary to find rhymes about words. And I pinged the last person who filed a bug about this package, and he was still using it. And the package has a popcorn of 50. And uh, nobody has been maintaining it for four years, I think, or five years. And what do you want to do with that? So <laughs> Just a quick reply to this. Uh, in terms of missing in action maintainers, they don't get asked to leave the project, but we have a special status for them. They're inactive, so if they come back, they can be quickly reactivated. And with packages, I think we should have something similar to that. I think it should be, like, I, I've been personally involved for the last two weeks now, in a, or three weeks, in a discussion to remove Rolo, um, which is unmaintained upstream, unma orphaned, and so on. But there's someone that uses it and wants to keep it. So I was like, well, then go and maintain it. And he said, well, I can't. I was like, okay, we'll just orphan it until, uh, we'll, we'll remove it until somebody actually can maintain it. But he, obviously didn't like that very much because he uses the software and also because I think that he doesn't like the prospect of removing it, meaning that it has to go again through the new queue, that it might take like, you know, four weeks for the package to get back in. So maybe this is something we could streamline. A package can be removed, but if somebody actually then decides to pick up a previously removed package, put it straight back in because it has previously been in there, but I don't think we have that. Well, that's an implementation detail about the new queue, I think. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> small comment about Martin's uh, suggestion that um, we should handle packages and uh, developers the same way. Uh, our users are using packages. They are not using developers. So there are completely different requirements on how to handle these two sets of resources in the project. I was going to say one way you can implement uh, the package not showing up and unstable is just like making an upload to experimental and leaving it in there until someone picks it up and uploads it back to unstable. But then, then it doesn't get auto-built. I don't know if that's... <laughs> at least it's, it's sort of there, but it doesn't have to go through the new queue again just to get back into unstable. Uh, I think it's uh, a good correlation that an orphan package, a package that has been orphaned for a long time is actually unmaintained, but it's not a perfect correlation. And uh, I think it would be good to find uh, approaches for, for finding packages that are nominally maintained, but not actually. And I've suggested it somewhere earlier that we could, for example, decide that uh, any package that hasn't been uploaded since the previous release is unmaintained and should be removed, probably. Uh, well, there are some quite old packages in Debian that, uh, that work perfectly well. 
that have not been uploaded for two releases and I know I maintain one uh, but frankly, if, if someone, uh, if there's no change to a package for, for three, four, five years, uh, I'm sure there are exceptions, but mostly I think it's uh, a package that isn't being maintained. In response to, I think it was Martin, I think we could create something that would be the opposite of volatile, static.debian.org, to which we move these packages that never, uh, that people are uh, still using but don't have a maintainer. And whoever actually really cares could then pick up the package from there. Uh, just a question. I remember there was a, a previous discussion, and uh, there was say that the the package that or has been orphaned for a long time and uh, what is spotted that has a lot of NMUs and uh, 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 that are badly maintained will be. Uh, rise up as a release critical bug and to be to be to to be this package out of testing at least and then it, it actually will be removing a release cycle uh, uh, and the next release cycle the package won't be in a stable and should do that somebody push up and maintain the package again i don't know if that that discussion move up so i didn't follow it well, the, actually, the discussion that took place last year at DevConf didn't go anywhere, uh, partly because we were supposed to release uh, Lenny just af well soon after DevConf. So we, it wasn't the right time to start trying to remove lots of packages from, uh, from testing. Now, the, well, whether we want to remove them using uh, RC bugs or using uh, release team ins or another way, so that's just uh, an implementation detail, I think. So the question is, do we want to remove them from testing or not? Um, yes. yes. Well. <laughs> yes, the thing is that if, if, if we move the package out of testing, at least, uh, raising up the orphan status to a release, a, a release critical bug, uh, the package should be removed in the next release cycle. The problem is if we remove them from testing, um, then users, uh, well, user might, users might not notice if they use uh, apt pinning. So it's not that easy to to see uh, if if the package that you are in, that you install are actually orphaned or not. So I'm not sure. If, well, that's probably a solution. Uh, to the fact that we release with them without knowing if they are properly maintained or not. And, but that's not a strong term solution to finding maintainers for those packages. Maybe it would be prop, uh, possible to add a DebConf warning message to all these packages. So if the user is installing or upgrading his system, he will get the message this is an orphan package for a long time. Uh, it may be possible or we, we like to remove this package for the next release. And if you really need this package, please mail to or file a bug report. I need this package. So, so I think then, then we could get a lot of packages removed during the next release. So, so what we have to do is um, make a new version with the DebConf um, informal message, and then we, we can inform the users, or maybe we will not remove the packages, but move them from uh, main to another repository like Volatile, um, as somebody else uh, just uh, suggested. Well, there's already a WNPP alert that uh, lists the package that you are installed and that are orphaned, but almost nobody uses it to find packages to maintain. So I'm not sure that adding a depth conf warning. But the, the problem is that we need to find maintainers who want to maintain them, not users. We might not want to remove them if they are useful to some users. for good reasons. <laughs> th th there are two kind of orphan package. The upstream orphan packages and the uh, unmaintained or without a Debian maintainer. So probably for the for those one who has not a Debian 
maintainer, we, we should keep it and, found, and find a, a maintainer. Uh, for the other ones, we should remove it. I mean, but, but, but we, we should, we should uh, put the difference between both of them. I don't know how. Um, as a user rather than a developer, it, when I, uh, I did some work with a package and I didn't know that it was unmaintained and there's no way of finding that out as a user and it sort of horrified me in a, you know, Debian's stable and everything's maintained. And actually as a consequence of finding out that this package was not maintained, I've now uh, worked with the package to uh, take it on. So. I think raising the awareness of it is definitely important. I think it's important to mention that if effectively user, we, we can always find user for, for the packages and it's always difficult to go to, oh, it's easy to go straight to we remove the package and don't care about the user, but uh, we really should focus on, on the long term and uh, the right thing to do is try to find maintainers and not try to put package uh, outside if possible. I know it's not easy, but uh, we really have to develop something. Uh, you told about a DevConf warning. Uh, I'm not sure it's enough. Uh, we could have something more integrated, uh, sort of, I don't know, uh, uh, sort of demo or uh, applet that you can have in your uh, task bar uh, that tells you uh, news about uh, your Debian system. Oh, you have two packages that are often uh, uh, for uh, give statistics about uh, stuff, stuff like that, and I think we could have users which are not yet really contributors, but which would like to follow and use this kind of stuff, and uh, maybe uh, try to con contribute this way. It's well, I, uh but I think we we already had some processes for those packages that are orphaned where are users that like to have this package and if there's a maintainer who says oh yes i'm i'm i will um, maintain this package we do not have problems with those packages i think the the package that have some problems are where we do not find a maintainer for a long time and maybe we do also do not know if there are users that are using this and if those package ha has some bugs, I think we should remove them. If, if we could find uh, a maintainer for a package, because there are many users, um, these are not the packages we are talking about now. A question, what's the question in the back? Yes, I just wanted to say, I agree with that, but the way I don't think we do enough to find maintainers, and we should improve on that. Uh, we need time for that mainly, and but it's not a difficult task to uh, go on the upstream communities, see if uh, there are maintainer iLive or another user that would like to maintain well, it. Well, when but there are more than 500 packages to <laughs> for, for yes, which we need to I do know. that, it's quite a uh, It's difficult for us, but yeah. I mean, it's not technically difficult, so it's a way for new, for some user to start contributing. It's I mean a, no, because the problem with that is that you, make, you have to make an, uh, an assessment about the Usefulness, usefulness of the package. It's really hard to say uh, to someone you don't know, um, just come and tr see if this, if this package is useful and if it isn't, remove it. Because uh, you need to trust him at least uh, a bit. Well. Some mistakes have been made in the past about... Uh, sure, uh, I don't, uh, don't think that uh, those contributors should ask for the removal, but mm. they can get in touch with uh, in forums or in s uh, yes w web forums or related to the software or in mailing list upstream or uh, in user groups somewhere else where this software has been mentioned uh, that uh, well we need a Debian maintainer for it and uh, if, if they find nobody and it's it's one more information that we have and uh, well maybe it's really time to remove it but uh, cr currently we don't do that at all. Um, I have a question as a, um, as a uh, Debian user, as a commercial user, if I have demand for a certain package which I do not want to maintain, which options do I have to sponsor, uh, to sponsor the uh, 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 maintenance of such a package? Uh, 
uh, I think you can always pay someone for that. Yeah, that's that's the obvious solution. We, we've uh, in school Linux, we paid some developers to work on the packages we cared about for a year or two, and that's definitely one alternative. You can also pay companies that hire developers that will take care of packages you care about if you want that. Of course, you can also do the community way where we have um, organized developer gatherings for areas where we wanted to have progress. We have uh, well, partly funded DebCamp, DebConf, that kind of thing. The Extremadura government is funding a lot of developer gatherings uh, on the topics that they find interesting and Debian find interesting. Uh, so if you have money to spend, there are many ways to do it to make sure your areas are well covered. So uh, uh, where would I, where would I especially ask if I, uh, if I want to find somebody with the expertise in, in the uh, area I'm looking for the, uh, at the package? I mean, it kind of depends on the package, but usually you can find on Debian consultants mailing list, or if yeah. worse comes to worse, you can ask on Debian Devil, saying, hey. Thanks. Debian project. Uh, sorry, Debian project. Uh, and ask if there's somebody who's interested in maintaining the package. Um, and those would be good places to ask. Yeah, I mean, but worst case, you ask in one of those places, and someone will tell you the best place to ask. So don't don't be afraid of asking in the wrong place. Um, just a short idea to uh, raise the awareness about upfront packages. Here I am. Okay, thank you. Um, we guess uh, all people reading the mails for root, so we can uh, implement a cron job or anything like that to inform uh, the root that uh, any package is all front. And uh, for desktop user, maybe it can be done by update uh, manager or thumb, something like that, so that uh, we have a pop-up box for the desktop user, hey, uh, your package is all front, maybe some people will jump into the uh, train and take it over, maybe. So this may be uh, a way to raise the awareness for the people that are in interested of using package that are up front. Uh, Does this work? Okay, I've actually written a program <laughs> for uh, Ubuntu that is included in Ubuntu called Computer Janitor for the desktop user, which, among other things, looks for orphan packages uh, and always finds Skype. <laughs> so it needs some improvement still, but uh, I mean, tools exist for this, for, for telling users. Um, I have been lagging in uploading it to Debian, but that will eventually happen. Please kick me if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, the problem is also the level of, um, well, how many users do we want to reach uh, with such information? Because if we only reach the people who have the specific package that provides the script, then it, we won't reach many people. I'm not sure that uh, even amongst DD, lots of DD would, would install such a package. And if I think at some point, too, we have to decide that we tried our very best to reach users. Uh, and. I mean, people who wish to see more uh, stringent controls before removing packages, I think it behooves them to put in the effort to try to find maintainers for those packages. So I, I think at some level, the QA team has to set aside, in, perhaps internally, uh, exactly what level they want to do and request removals at after they've identified an orphan package. And people who think that those packages should, more should be done um, they should participate in QA and spend the time to find maintainers for those packages. So, I mean, it's easy to tell uh, QA to spend more time finding maintainers. Uh, it's much more difficult to jump in and actually do that work. Um, so, I mean, if, if you think QA makes a decision and a procedure that's not rigorous enough, jump in and do the work. Yeah, I think that's, that's the most important point. Uh, Rafael's 
saying that this is not a technical difficult problem. No, it is not a technical problem at all. It's a social and resource allocation problem. Is this the best way to spend an hour? And personally, I don't think I would spend many hours trying to track down potential developers and maintainers of packages. If they are interested, they should show up when the problem arrives. If they don't, then they are not interested enough. And my hours are better spent working on packages that I do maintain. And I suspect some, or probably most, developers feel the same way. Uh, it's how do we best spend the resources in Debian. If people want to do this, sure, go ahead. I will not stop them. I will actually reward them and send them on their way and hope they will do a good job finding new maintainers. But uh, you cannot expect anyone to actually drop what they are doing at the moment because we do it because it's fun. We believe it's fun what we are doing. And tracking down potential maintainers doesn't sound like fun to me. Yeah. So one idea that uh, was raised last year was to have uh, a cron job added to dev scripts, which would reach uh, potential maintainers uh, that would report the newly orphaned packages. Uh, who would think that, well, installed by default when you upgrade dev scripts because uh, developers ob obviously run dev scripts on the machines they used to develop Debian, so who would think that this is uh, appropriate? If it was you and so who doesn't? Okay, so uh, we have two uh, two people. Who does? No. Ah, yeah, because uh, well. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, something like eight. Must and who doesn't? Okay. And with reading IRC or email. Okay, <laughs> 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 maybe Liv, you can explain. Uh, uh, spending more, uh, <laughs> sending more email to people who get thousands of emails per week uh, tends not to work very well. Uh, I'm not suggesting you shouldn't do it, I'm just saying that it probably won't work very well. Uh, um, unfortunately, I don't have a more constructive suggestion. Mm. Uh, maybe sending Debian user these, these emails. Uh, I want to say something back to um, maybe we should not call it that we want to remove the package at all, but maybe we want to move it out of the main part of Debian because, yes, users are our priority, but also um, a level of quality. And if the package do not have a certain amount of quality, they should be moved from main to something like volatile or something else. <laughs> so uh, well, our users ha also have the pr um, pr uh, the, the wish to have uh, packages that are non-free or multimedia package, and we also do not have them in in our main repository. And there's this this uh, Debian multimedia repository, what I think nearly everyone uses. And so that uh, I think we could move those package to a new repository, which is not uh, which is not. Uh, in the official part of Debian, but if there are some users that like to use these very old, not maintained, maybe buggy uh, packages, they could do this. And and yeah, and I think users are our priority, but also, and I think that's very important, the quality of the packages in Debian main. That's Andreas. Um, I've heard the suggestion to add new ways of keeping packages more than once. I think the first time I ran across this suggestion was on a Saturday morning in Vancouver discussing with Elmo about how to structure our packages. And from that time on I've heard a lot of suggestions, but why, why doesn't somebody just do it? I think Devin is not about saying somebody needs to, because I've not seen somebody as a Devin developer until now, but only people who are doing stuff. So if you want it, just, just do it. If you, if you need help in things like setting up auto builders, of course, I'm, I'm happy to help you there, but if, if you think it's useful and useful enough, then do it. If not, well, then it won't happen. 
No, but, but, but I think the current question is, do we want to remove those packages from the main Debian repository, or do we like to keep them inside the official main repository? Well, if, if a package is too crappy, we need to remove it. What else should we do? Of course, there's something uh, like, uh, how should I say, an archive of packages that were ever in Debian, so we didn't lose any package at least uh, during the last five years. We can always recover any intermediate version, so yes, of course, we should keep that, but if we can't support it, we should, should remove it. What else should we do? I don't think it's good to say, well, we have these packages that you can work with, and we have here a bunch of crap that you might want to install otherwise as well. And what you should also be aware of that every package with, which goes into the main archive and is not removed needs to be uh, supported by the sec security team. And uh, that's, it might be worse to, to put more effort into just saying, okay, this pa package is really too crap, just remove it from the main archive because every crappy package adds load to the security team and to other teams, like the QA team. So, so I think um, we, we should encourage the QA team to remove packages. I kind of like the suggestion to use... <laughs> <laughs> I like the suggestion to use experimental to move packages that are unmaintained, because that's quite easy, and it's still inside Debian somehow. Users who use experimental know that what they are doing. Um, who would agree with the uh, fact that uh, orphan packages would be moved to experimental after uh, some uh, individual examination, but not really, well, th not very throughout, but... Uh, yeah. yeah, please comment before me. <laughs> So I, I like that the idea is nice, but it inhibit using experimental. Like if when after if a new maintainer gets interested in the package, but first want to release something to experimental, it looks like we are using something which is supposed to do something else to solve the problem that we don't have a place where to put those packages. One issue that's not been mentioned uh, about removing packages or moving to experimental is what about um, orphan packages with um, maintained RDAPs? With, oh, yeah. Reverse dependencies? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. No, but the uh, short examination about each package would include that test to see if, uh, yeah, of course. That's so just to, uh, can you raise your hand again if you agree with the idea of moving them to experimental or to another place? Okay, who doesn't agree with that? Okay, Raphael, explain. <laughs> uh, well, I don't think that moving the packages to experimental is a good reason. Um, maybe if uh, the if, uh, snapshots will be back, will be working, then we could just remove the packages and anyone who's interested in the package can look at the snapshots and get it back, uh, of course, by fixing it. I mean, because packages are not removed just because we want to remove them. I mean, there's, a, there's always a reason. Either they are buggy, they are unmaintained, they, are, they have some sort of problem. So just moving them to experimental doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, we are just temporarily moving the crap to some other place, and then we will, <laughs> we will clutter experimental with more crap. I mean, that, that doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, yeah but the, the point of doing that is to have an uh, intermediate solution between keeping them in testing and stable, yeah. and yeah. unstable. Having and having them removed, and that's w yes, I I agree. It's a problem if it's filled with crap. But on the other side, uh, well, while the, the package is in the experimental, it's in Debian, and it has a page on the package tracking system, and it will be cl clearly identified as well. It's not in unstable, so you need a maintainer to push it over there, and uh, so it's a good. I, I think if we use us this together with the fact that we remove package early from testing. Uh, we keep it visible within Debian over a longer 
time period while still uh, showing to the user that the package is in danger because it has been removed from testing. So it's a good uh, intermediate solution, I think. Yeah. Well, is there, is there any particular reason? I, I mean, is it there any will show up in the orphan package list in aptitude. Yeah, uh, what user? Well, some do. We don't need all users to notice. We just need to those who care. Is there any bit. particular reason why we don't just remove the package and use the uh, snapshot system that is planning on tracking all versions of packages to Debian ever uploaded? And a user who suddenly desires to use such an orphan package can then point themselves at this snapshot system? Yeah, but then you have to build the package yourself. Uh, no, 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 no. The snapshot system, uh, my understanding of it is that it will also archive every single binary package that we've done. So we just remove it completely as once the snapshot system exists and the binary packages will be there and a user who wants to use it will still be able to use it. It'll be no different than moving it to experimental, but we won't have it cluttering experimental as well. Um, so I think that may be the ultimate solution. Just remove it once this is all done and it'll resolve the issue yeah. for users who still have a use case for it yeah, uh, while I telling them completely that it's not supported. I don't think we have many users who are going to look into Snapchat to get the package. Uh, the few users that would complain uh, about the package being removed already use the package, so they have it on their system and it shows up in the orphan packages. And Just to the, the idea is to try to find a way to streamline the, the process so that we can orphan the package and find a m hopefully find a maintainer and uh, remove it only as a last resort and not uh, the default case immediately. Well, removing it immediately is not really interesting. Uh, May, may, may I just well, answer to uh, answer to Don? The um, the one thing which is still missing to get the snapshot arch archive working is get, uh, getting a machine shipped to Sanger, which uh, S Stephen Grant is uh, willing to do, but was qu qu uh, just too busy directly in front of DebConf um, doing so. So that will happen a few weeks after DebConf, and. I hope we have uh, snapshots up by something like uh, beginning of, of October. So awesome. There, awesome. Is, there is some progress made from all from the DSA side. Yeah, I, I just wasn't aware what the current status was. I knew that it was in progress. So that's awesome to hear. Yeah, but really, the, I think that's the point of having something like experimental or another archive area that user can directly use is that it provides an intermediate solution when you hesitate between removing, keeping, and uh, moving to experimental. <laughs> and that's really the point, because often, you, well, when you look at one package that's been orphaned for a long time, you don't want to spend two hours doing that. So after some time, you think, okay, I need to take a decision, which one will I take? And if you have something in the middle? Well, I think they're in the middle, if once snapshot is working, there's no difference between a user having to add an experimental source and a user having to add a source that is uh, in the snapshot. It's the same. I mean, they just point it to a particular package that they want, they write the source, sources list entry, and it's done. Yeah, but then the package wouldn't show up easily on Google, for example. If you Google for the package name, oh, sure. and... Good. But, but <laughs> that all can be... I mean, no, if but that's something that's it's a serious problem, then it can be added. I mean, we can have pay web pages that say, okay, what do I do if my package has been removed from Debian that I can no longer install? Well, okay, this is what you do. Uh, and so that's all stuff that can be done. I mean, it'll archive at least the, it'll see the removal request for the bug. Um, and in the re standard QA request for removal, you can say, have a boilerplate text that says, if you want to install this package, which we've removed for these reasons, add this line to your sources.list and, in and install. And by the way, last year I said that maybe the best idea will be to create a page where we mentioned all the packages that were removed because of because they were unmaintained or something. Because currently we cannot just point the users to the uh, to FTP master removals file because it is cluttered by other removals because of some other uh, for, uh, of some other reasons. So I, if I remember, uh, I think Pabs was working on something like that, or 
I may be wrong. <laughs> well, but the idea will be to create such a page so that we could point users to that page or even people interested in that pa in those packages. So that, for example, because there used to be some, at least some people trying to get those packages back. And it will be easier if we just said, go look for that on that page. Uh, one thing that we could do to make that already easier, uh, in the FTP master, uh, there is a user tag for the FTP master user called ROQA, uh, which does the removal by request of QA. Um, and so you can add another user tag and just have uh, a search request to the BTS that just displays those bugs. Um, and it'll display right. all of them. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's and, and that'll be easy and there's no extra effort needed. Um, uh, one other reason against moving it to experimental is if the user want to use an old package and adds a line for the experimental repository to his sources list file, then he will get the old package that he likes to use, but also brand new packages that are not stable at all. Sorry? Yeah, but yeah. yeah, what was discussed is the fact that experimental always is always given a default priority of one, I think, in apt preferences, so there's no problem. Like yeah, but, but I'm not sure if the users are that um, good in changing the pinning numbers for getting only the one old package that they like to use. It's done by default by the releases file, so the user doesn't have to do anything. Yeah. Uh, they have to know enough about app preferences to change it from the default. Okay, we have two minutes remaining. So I originally asked for another slot for the QA both because I knew that we, it would probably take more time. So there's another part on Wednesday or Friday or Thursday, I think. So if you have if maybe maybe we could gather and try to write uh, to summarize the different proposals that popped up during the discussion because we don't want to start again from the from scratch and okay so talk to me if you want to help to summarize this well maybe we can take another comment because we have 2 minutes left no okay <laughs> Uh, just, just one question. Snapshot uh, storage the source of the package? No, also the binaries. Uh, well, I if 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 we storage uh, the source, it's easy to retake the 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 package for a for a newbie. It's easier when when you have the the no, old both, source. Both are stored in the in snapshots. So oh, oh, see, sorry, I didn't know. 